brothers and sisters in the Lord. I hope God has been good to you. We are living in a serious time and God wants his people to get ready here at the end of the world. And as you have seen on the screen, we are going to be looking at this afternoon, Seventh-day Adventists needing endurance. Now, I don't know if you have recalled the story of John Bunyan when he had received the vision of Pilgrim. And Pilgrim, and in the Pilgrim progress, there was this particular individual who was Christian. And alongside Christian, you have another one who was known as Pliable. Now, when Christian was on the journey, he heard of what was going to happen to the city. And he went on leaving his wife and his children behind. But as he was going along, others were trying to convince him to turn back. So there was one who, whose name was Pliable who went there. And when Christian told him of the beautiful city that they were going, Pliable was convinced for a moment. And so he started to tell Christian to hurry along. And as he tried to pull Christian to hurry along, because of the rush that he was in, they both fell into the pond of despondency. Now, as they fell in the pond of despondency, Pliable began to complain. He said, is this the heavenly place you have spoken to me about? That we will be walking on street and street of gold? If I am going to face this, no, I'm not going any further. And so he came out of the pond of despondency and he left Christian behind and he turned back. Now, I just want to say this, that this is what is happening with many Seventh-day Adventists today. And this is what is going to happen in the future when the crisis will come upon us. Many of us who today claim to be serving God will turn back when hardship reach us. But before we go any further, my brothers and my sisters, let us greet the Lord with a word of prayer. Eternal God and our Father who art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness towards us. We are truly living in the last days and you want us to get ready, Lord, for what is about to come. We're asking you to fit us up with your enduring spirit that we may be able to go through hardship and trial. Lord, cleanse our hearts from every and anything that is unlike thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So being saved is connected with endurance. So if you don't endure to the end, you will not be saved. If you come up to the point where a crisis hit you in your life, and by the grace of God, you are not enduring through that crisis, you turn back through that crisis, you will not be saved. We need the enduring grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So only those who endure to the end will be saved, as the Bible just says. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11, it says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. So this race that we are in is not a race that is for 
the swift. No, that's why pliable turned back so quickly because he was in a rush. He was trying to get there so quickly. But guess what? A hardship came upon him so quickly as well that he turned back so quickly. Neither is it for the strong. It's not for the strong. Neither yet to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen it to them all. My brothers and my sisters, this race that we are running is a race that is going to take time. Okay? It is going to take a lot of time. We need to take time to study our Bible. We need to take time to get our lives right with God. You know the, 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 the hymn that says, Take time to be holy. We need to take time to be holy. And we also need to take the chance. You have to take the chance. Are you willing to give up certain things that you're clinging on to? We have to learn to deny ourselves. We have to take the chance to deny ourselves. It has to be so. We need time with God. We need a time. We need communion with God. And we need a change of surrounding. This is how we are going to be able to endure to the end. Time and chance happen it to them all. My brothers and my sisters, are you taking the time out? Take time out for Jesus. He took time for you. Are we taking the time out? We need to take the time out during the day. If you're driving, you can get your phone and you can play the scripture. Don't be distracted by all the things that are happening in the media. Take the time out to study the scripture and to cause it to, to bring about a change in your life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, Know he not that they which run in a race, run it, run all, but one receive the prize, so run that he may obtain. And every man that strive it for the mastery is temperate in all things. No, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. No. When we speak of this running here, my mind is being brought back to Habakkuk chapter 2 when the word came to the prophet Habakkuk where he says, write the vision and make it plain upon table. Right? And when it is written and made up plain upon table, we must run with it. We must run with it because it is a race. Okay? We must strive for the mastery when we are running this race. And we are going to be temperate in all things. And true temperance brings in abstinence from everything that is bad. And moderation in everything that is good. Now it says that these persons who are running these worldly races, they are running it to obtain a corruptible crown in other words this is a crown that will perish but we who are running the christian race we want to inherit an incorruptible crown you know the bible says in revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 be thou faithful even unto death and i will give you a crown of life are you able to go through the time period where scorn and scoffs will be thrown at you? Are you willing to give up everything 
for your Lord. I therefore so run, said Paul, not as uncertainly. No, he's not running with any uncertainty. He is running with surety. He is running believing the promise of Jesus Christ that he is going to give him a crown of life. So fight I, not as one that beat at the air. So he is fighting for something. You know, some persons, they are fighting and they don't know what they are fighting for. We as Christians, we know what we are fighting for. We know with certainty why we are running this race. And by the grace of God, those of us who endure to the end, we will receive our sure and great reward. Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. It reads, And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now, let me tell you something. When in these last days you stand up, and you start to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. Men will hate you. Men near you, men far away as well, will hate you because you are now speaking against the kingdom of darkness. And once you're speaking against the kingdom of darkness, you will be hated. Once you're speaking against apostasy, you will be hated. Once you're speaking the truth, you will be hated. But if you endure in these things, you will be saved. You know, there are many persons nowadays who are even like Peter. You know, Peter, he was willing to fight for his Lord. But when they began to cough at him and they began to mock him, he denied his Lord. He denied Christ. There are men like Judas who will sell their master for 30 pieces of silver. But God is saying to us that we need to endure all these things to the very end we need to endure that we might be saved by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Endurance is what is greatly needed right now to our fellow Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 2 and verse 7. It says, To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. How do we seek for eternal life and immortality? With patient continuance in well-doing. With what? Patient, continual in well-doing. We're seeking for the glory. We're seeking for the honor. And we're seeking for immortality and eternal life. But we are going to do it with patient, continuance in well-doing. We must not become too tired of doing good things. We must continue to do good things as long as it lasts. And remember, we cannot do anything good of ourselves, right? So in order for us to do anything that is good, we have to follow the thus say the Lord. And so therefore, we are going to speak Christ's words instead of speaking our own words. Amen? That's what God is calling us to do. Stop speaking our own words. We need to continue to do good. We need to continue to do good. Are you visiting the poor? Are you taking care of the sick and the, and the naked? Are you visiting the imprisonment? Are you doing these things to help so that when God comes, he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Continue in well-doing. That is what God is calling upon us for. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which shall which thou shalt shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, 
and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful even unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, this was written for the time period of Diocletian, the Roman Empire, who were persecuting, who was persecuting God's people at that particular time, inflicting death upon them. But this is the message that God gave to them. Be thou faithful even unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. My brothers and my sisters, that time is coming in the near future when your liberty of conscience will be taken away, when you will not be able to buy or sell, sell save he that have the mark of the beast. God says, if you be faithful even unto death, he is going to give you a crown of life. But if you receive the mark of the beast, you will only receive damnation. You heard me? You will only receive damnation. And I'm sure you don't want to receive damnation. So fight the good fight of faith and suffer for godly sake. And you will be on the Lord's side by his grace. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endure. But, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, Paul is here telling you that he was persecuted at so many different places. But he said what? He endured through them. And Christ had delivered him out of all of them. And then he says that every single one of us, all, he never said some, he said all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Let me tell you something. Many persons today don't want to suffer persecution. They want to live a carefree, careless life. They don't want to be afflicted by anything. They don't want to stand for anything. But God is telling us that we must stand for truth and for righteousness. It doesn't matter what may come. Once we stand for truth and for righteousness, God will eventually deliver us he will eventually deliver us okay and that time is coming again when persecution will rekindle the fire among us we need to endure through all these things by the grace of god second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 though therefore endure hardness what shall you endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. What? No man that what? Wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. So we must not be entangled with all the affairs that are in this life because we are doing what? We are at war and so the attention is needed to focus on the, on the enemy and his plots and his devices that he is using to try to distract our minds he will use everything he can possibly use to distract us it says he that he may be pleased that he may please him who had chosen him to be what a soldier so we have somebody to please. Who are we trying to please here? We are trying to please the one who have chosen us to be a soldier. And who is that person? It is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus had chosen us to be a soldier. The Bible tells us we, we must be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And when we are being good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we cannot entangle ourselves with all the things that are distracting us we have to please him 
And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. So this crown is one that will be given what? Lawfully. So we have to follow the law of Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Because it is a lawful striving that is going on. And if we ought to be crowned with the crown of life, it is what? A lawful crown. It cannot be any unlawful crown because there will be no unlawful individual in heaven. Everyone who will be in heaven will be lawful citizens of heaven. Okay? Unlawful citizens will be imprisoned and then will eventually be prosecuted. Okay? So God is calling upon us to, to strive and to, to endure as good soldiers of Jesus Christ and to keep our minds focused on Jesus Christ and also focused on the enemy that he will not deceive us by the grace of God. Now, with this last scripture, I'm going to take this presentation to a close, but listen carefully to what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Hmm. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And I think this passage, the, these passages of scriptures are well chosen to end this presentation. If we endure, what will he do? He will give us what? Eternal glory. If we are dead with Christ, we will live with him. Because guess what? He was dead, but yet he is what? He's alive again. He live again. And if we suffer, he had suffered. But if we suffer with him, what will he do? He will cause us to reign with him. But if we deny him, in our lifestyle, in the way how we speak, in the way how we walk, in the way how we talk, in the way how we dress, in the way how we eat, in the way how we deal with our fellow brothers and sisters, he will also deny us. Brothers and sisters, we need endurance in these last days. And God is sending us this message of warning that we may get it right with him, that we may change our lifestyle, that we may change our behavior, that we may look to Jesus Christ and be transformed because it is only those of us who endure hardship, trial, privation will be able to obtain that eternal glory. And on that note, I would like to close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, word in heaven. We are thankful for your mercies. We are thankful for your kindness. We are thankful for your love. We ask that you may help us to endure to the very end. We ask that you may help us to endure persecutions. We ask that you may help us to endure privation. We ask, Lord, that you may help us to endure to the very end and to endure lawfully that we may be able to obtain that crown of life. Father, be with your people here at the end of the world. Help us not to lose sight of you and sink like how Peter had lost sight of you and was sinking. But help us to have our minds and our thoughts fixed upon you so that by beholding we will become perfectly changed into the image and the character of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen.